Hello again, O oh audience who probably doesn't exist, and welcome back to The Great Partition in Europa Universalis 4. I'm Paragon Saber, and things have uh, continued to progress, let's just say that. So last time we did see Nitra and Odiev again initiate a war against Venice. They fought a coalition war against them earlier, but Venice's massive trade leak prevented any gains there. I believe they signed a white peace, but uh, Nitra back from war, and Venice now without a trade leak to protect them. Venice has actually fallen under a Republican dictatorship, having elected the ruler previous to this one one too many times, now under Lord Protector Simone Gritti. As soon as he dies, though, we will have a Venetian monarchy. Venice also going vassal crazy. Uh, Epirus they simply vassalized outright, but then releasing tags like Achaea, Maria, Montenegro, and Bosnia to serve as vassals, and citing, yeah, no, nobody needs diplomatic points. Meanwhile, we do appear to have Gascony and Brittany at war. That would be the Gascon conquest of Morbihan. Uh, is anybody else involved in this? Yeah, yeah, Gascony is actually fighting Toulouse, so that might things make things semi-difficult for them. We shall see, but uh, I, I think that more war might go in Gascony's favor. Other than that, Prussia formed a couple episodes back. The Teutonic Order was actually a thing for a little bit, but uh, Mazovia saying no to that, taking Tuchola. And uh, Poland is dealing with magnet rebels. They are an elective monarchy at this point, despite uh, not having... Well, uh, no, sorry, they did take the Jagellion. I, I don't know why I was uh, confused by that. Regardless, they're fighting the Sejm at this point. Good luck to them. That 36 stack is not going to be easy to take down. Though it looks like the Magnet Rebels have a bit less morale than Poland does. Things have been mostly unchanged in the Persian region. They do have all of this consolidated now. They did turn on their former ally of Afghanistan and take a lot of their land. Kiva also jumping on them, but Kiva now experiencing the wrath of the Russians without Persia to protect them. Pretty sure they still have Delhi helping them and uh, could get some help from Kalka as well, but I think Russia is going to continue to expand. Meanwhile, in the east, Emperor Wu fighting former Emperor Yan and losing. Zero mandate, <clears throat> something very tough to deal with. You take 50% extra shock, 50% extra fire, and 100% extra pain. Alrighty then. Uh, regardless, this is only a war over Chinese hegemony, so a war of conquest. Uh, Yan not looking to take the mandate back by this point. Perhaps they've learned their lesson, or perhaps they just want to uh, take some territory first. Regardless, Nanjing is sieged down by this point, though that is not Wu's capital. I think that's enough blabbing for now. I'll go ahead and start it back up again. Global Trade did spawn last episode in London, so that the second institution that has spawned in British lands, colonialism up there as well. Uh, of course, global trade a tad, uh, well, more more people get it because it takes up in every center of trade in the world. So uh, a lot easier to embrace than colonialism, though perhaps a little more expensive. Do see some separatists in Lorraine. Looks like Lorraine has taken over Bar, and the Barois separatists are not happy about that. We also see Brabant going after High No. Lots of different reinforcements going in there. Uh, I know Aachen is fighting on High No's side, but who else is? Oh my. Is this the League War? Did the League War fire? I think the League War fired. Yes, the League War fired, and it's the War of the Protestant League, so Prussia, feeling confident that the Protestant League will be able to take down the Catholic League, let's see how it goes. I mean, we do have the likes of Great Britain, Denmark, Naples, Russia, uh, Spain, all of those on the Protestant side, whereas the Catholic side does have a few heavy hitters of its own. Austria, pretty good. Brabant, pretty good. Toulouse, fairly strong. Novgorod, I mean, could be weaker. Gascony, decently strong. But 
a lot of the rest of those uh, more minor nations are one province minors. I guess Bavaria's not bad, but uh, the League War is underway. Though, is Gascony... So Gascony is actually not involved because they are at war with somebody else in the same league, that being Toulouse. Uh, that's a bit of a blow to the Catholic side. Gascony would have been maybe not the biggest help, but something or somebody that you definitely do want fighting uh, on your side if you're Austria. We do have Denmark down here uh, trying to fight the likes of Odiev and perhaps Theodoro. Is Theodoro in that? No, Theodoro not involved in the, tr uh, the League War. No longer allied with Circassia. That's something to note. Imeritia. Oh, sorry. Odiev has integrated Imeritia, giving them a Caucasian exclave. That's, that's ugly. I don't like that. I, I hope Persia takes it. That would make the border so nice and clean. But it's probably just wishful thinking. Kiva fighting back against Russia. Russia, somebody else who was pulled into that league war. Uh, I mean, it looks like they're pulling their forces back from Kiva and ready to take down Novgorod. Russia, again, fighting on the Protestant side in this conflict. Along with heavy hitters such as Prussia and Great Britain. Also have Spain, of all people, on the Protestant side. Spain's still staunchly Catholic, but uh, perhaps filling more of a French role in this, uh, in this sense. They don't like Austria, so uh, they uh, join the Protestant side instead. Spain also, also sitting on a great Regency Council, a 435 Regency Council for a 254 ruler. I mean, they're not going to be hurting for Monarch points. The ruler not the greatest, but... Uh, Gascony did finish that war against Brittany, taking Morbihan, Armor, Maine, and Alencion. Sorry, they already had Maine. Uh, just Morbihan, Armor, and Alencion. But uh, more growth there for Gascony. Are they a great power? No, but Ma uh, Bahmanis is. Bahmanis has long been the eminent power in central India, now just the eminent power in India at all. Uh, only reason they're not even stronger is because they've been allied to Madurai for so long. Apparently deciding that southern India, not for them. Regardless, this is the first time we've seen them as a great power, so welcome to them. Some separatists over here. Tripuran's separatists for Bengal. I think Tripura is a one province minor at the very beginning. And yep, they're just sitting on that province. Bengal ready to get rid of them. Wu continuing continuing to get occupied by Yan. Japan with a decent sized army, but uh, not doing all that much with it. Ainu is their tributary state, but uh, I mean, Japan could attack a few different people. They could go after Buryatia, they could go after Yuren, they could go after Korea. They could go after Ryukyu, but uh, Japan really doesn't seem to attack Ryukyu all that often. And Ryukyu uh, is allied with Yi. So has Ryukyu become a tributary then? They have not. Wu has actually gotten themselves nine tributaries. Uh, still losing mandate because, unfortunately, of non-tributaries, they would need to make people like Shi, Huai, or Yan tributaries if they really wanted to start gaining mandate. But uh, they did better, at least numbers-wise, with tributaries than any of their predecessors. If Yan takes that back in the future, we'll see if they can do better on the second go-round. Back to the League War. I don't see any of Austria proper siege down. I do see uh, Austria in the Iberian Peninsula with a 17, overall 17, uh, versus Spain's 12. Can't help but wonder where their other armies are. Is Gascony now involved? Yes. Gascony has now joined the war on the Protestants, or uh, on the Catholic side, as expected. 
Catholic side currently losing just barely to Vorskor in favor of the Protestant League at this point. Not seeing nearly as many occupations as I'd expected. Uh, we do see... Is Siena involved in the League War? They are. So we do see Siena getting some good occupations on Switzerland. See Brabant. Uh, Vlaanderen, Flanders, is occupied by Friesland at this point, though Brabant has sent its 30,000 strong army over there to protect that. There are peasants uh, coming in to fight them, but that's not going to help them at all. But now they're going after Nevers, leaving Flanders occupied. The Space Marines have landed in East Frisia. That's not going to be fun for them, but that is a level 5 fort for them to siege down. Uh, they do have the blockade on it, which makes life a little easier, though. I do wonder, do they have that... Yes, so uh, Denmark the one doing the blockade. I think it applies to Frisia, though, or uh, to Prussia, though. They do have that... Uh, Uh, age ability. There we go. The age ability that uh, gives them plus one siege progress when a blockade is in place. Would love to see something like that with naval ideas. Uh, I know Paradox just did another rework of those recently, but really, we wouldn't want naval ideas for outright naval fighting. We would want to use those to assist in ground fighting. Uh, maybe maritime would make a little more sense to be reworked there. Regardless, Spain really, uh, I don't know where the rest of their army is. As a matter of fact, I'm actually going to check the ledger. Spain still has 50k, but only 12 of it trying to defend its home in the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, we also have Russia with uh, 80,000 ready to bring to bear on the conflict, probably sieging down Novgorod at this point. Austria, though, has 63. They can contend pretty well. Um... Nobody out of manpower yet, but Gascony and Austria both looking pretty close. Great Britain can also bring... Right now they have 38k, They probably their army a little bigger than that, but uh, they can bring that into the conflict. Interestingly enough, a lot of these European tags not on top as far as troops are concerned. Uh, they are great powers because of their development. Guys like Poland or, uh, well, I guess Poland is the main one that doesn't have the army size, but does have the development. And they are nearly fully occupied by Mazovia. Mazovia has had smaller portions of territory than Poland the entire game, but uh, has per repeatedly won or fought to stalemate wars against the Poles, mostly due to Brandenburg and later Prussia's help. But uh, still, it's been pretty admirable on their part. Scotland involved. Oh, Gotland has fallen into a union under Mazovia. That's a shame. Kind of a rough way for Mazovia to get that land as well. I mean... What is Mazovia supposed to do with that island out there? Especially since they won't be able to integrate it for 50 years. Perhaps they'll get an inheritance. Uh, Gotland is small, and I, I, I'm just not sure. Regardless, we see even Jermion up here beating up on Novgorod. That's pretty rough. Though Russia's armies have gone elsewhere. Uh, are they still fighting Kiva? They're not. So Russia appearing to white peace with Kiva. Uh, none of the borders changing, and Kiva turning its attention to Oirat and Uzbek, calling in Delhi to help with that. Or perhaps Delhi calling in Kiva, who knows? The Venetian Balkans have really just been full occupied. Uh, some of the vassals have escaped being occupied as of yet, but that's not going to last long. The fort down in Maria, now occupied by Nitra think Venice might be out of this one here pretty soon. They are on whose side? Or is this the earlier war that Nitra started? It is. 
So if Nitra or Venice were in it, either of the leagues, uh, well, perhaps just Nitra. Is, is Venice involved in the League War? They are. Venice uh, on the Protestant side, though. So. That is somewhat of a blow, but really, the Protestants are counting on Prussia, Russia. Uh, they really should be counting on Poland, but Poland hasn't helped them out much. And Mazovia doing all of that as part of the League War. Or was Poland on the Catholic side? Yes. Sorry, Poland a member of the Catholic League, so uh, the Protestants obviously not counting on them. They're counting on Mazovia and Prussia instead. <laughs> Pretty big battle concluding there uh, in Ansbach. I couldn't quite see who won. I see Brabant walking away in wounded style. So I think the Protestants won that. Right now, it's just saying that it's even. The League War is even. This is pretty fun. You don't... I don't think you usually see League Wars that are this even. Can't help but wonder if the Protestants are going to lose one of their heavy hitters, if not their biggest heavy hitter here in Spain, though. I don't know where Spain's army has gone, but Spain, the number one great power... Holding only 12,000 in the Iberian Peninsula, trying to contest Austria and doing an awful job at it. Even their capital in Madrid has fallen, to say nothing of forts in Valencia. And in Galicia, that doesn't look like it. Yep, forts in uh, the capital fort of Madrid, Castilla la Vieja, Valencia, all fallen, and Spain doing nothing about it. There are armies out here somewhere, maybe making life miserable for one of the Catholic League members, but Austria also almost fully occupying Naples. The Catholics are looking pretty good in this rendition of the League War. I mean, no, the war score is still negative, or now negative 12 for Austria. Uh, the aid of Great Britain has got to be helping them out a bit down here. And one can't help but wonder... Ah, so there's uh, about half of Russia's massive army. The Livonians on the Catholic side. Likely to get smushed. And there is Kola, occupied now by Russia. So Novgorod has been knocked out of the League War. Maybe not the largest loss for the Catholics, but... You still want as many tags helping you in your war as possible. Russia going after the Livonian capital of Reval. Sorry, just just a fort. Uh, the Livonian order at one point did move their capital back to their capital in Leafland. They started out with only the provinces of Goldingen and Mittau, but uh, clawed back and, I mean, hurting in the League War right now, but that's all right. I doubt Russia will take all that much from them. Uh, could see Peskov going to Russia in a peace deal. Uh, the nation of Peskov starting as a vassal under Muscovy. Of course, Muscovy having forming, formed Russia. We shall see. Austria helping Gascony take down some French separatists. France as a tag has been gone for a long time, but, uh... Again, they still have cores over here, the same way the Ottomans still have cores over all of Anatolia. We do see that Mentessa has somehow lost Bega to Aydin. Mentessa now a two-province minor in Idirn and Mentesha itself. We also see Ankara having gone from Jermion to Kandar. Kandar also still holding on to Philibe, though Bulgaria has gained more provinces again. You can't keep these guys down. You eliminate their nation? Separatists. You knock them down to two provinces and have both of those provinces occupied? Ha, huh, nope. The next time you look, they are the ones with two more provinces. I just can't explain it. 
So Venice's war with Nitra is over. Nitra did take Slavonia, though I don't see too many other things lost over here. Uh, I guess Serbia has gotten Dures and Valore. That's some things lost to Venice. Epirus has been set free. Maria has been set free. Achaea has been set free. Montenegro, are you free? You are, but Serbia wants you, so uh, you'll be going to Serbia. All of Venice's vassals over here in the Adriatic set free. And Sicily has Sicily again. How interesting. Naples knocked out of the war, and now just with their starting provinces. Well, that's good for Sicily. I'd like to see... Uh, I I'm glad to see them in better, sh better shape. Now have Gascony down here with... 28,000 trying to siege down Toledo. Again, where in the world is France? Things apparently... Uh, Austria apparently still losing. Uh, still wondering why no one has actively attempted to maybe siege down Vienna, but it is what it is. Prussia stack formerly seen on East Frisia, but not there anymore. Great Britain making a landing in Ostfriesland, so going to attack East Frisia. The naval landing will hurt, but uh, it does appear that Great Britain will win this battle. East Frisia's army stack wiped. Also have Norway trying to siege down Holstein, but Novgorod fighting Norway. That can't be part of the League War. That would simply be... The Norwegian conquest of Abwo. Norway thinking that Novgorod was very weak after losing in the League War. Perhaps true, but... Well, I'm not seeing much of a, Mon of a Norwegian army about. Perhaps Novgorod will get a chance to grow again. I mean, Novgorod has essentially become Finland at this point. Minus their trading cities and Kola. Russia taking even... Their longtime provinces of Viborg, Neva, and Ingermanland. Oh, and the Livonian Order has been partitioned again. So, yes, we did see Pskov being given to Russia as part of that peace deal, knocking the Livonians out of the League War, and they've lost Livonia and Estonia again, so they're back at square one. Rough stuff for them. Poland now looking pretty rough. They might have to give some territory to Mazovia, if not to Russia. Odiev also feeling the hurt from Russia. They were on the Catholic side and next to one of its heavy hitters. Not a good call for them. And we see Nitra. Well, I think Nitra. Nitra is on the Catholic side as well. So there are the Space Marines appearing to recuperate in Berlin. Actually lost a battle. Surprising. I mean, not that the Space Marines, you know, that they're obviously capable of losing battles, but uh, they do tend to turn whatever conflict they're sent into. War score wise, things are favoring the Protestants, but map wise, things appear to be favoring the Catholics. I, I don't know. Thing is, if the Catholic League is that low on war score, even with all of Spain occupied, or almost all of Spain occupied, how are things going to look when Spain gets pieced out? Can't help but wonder. There is a Spanish 22 stack up here, just sitting on Orléans. Um, not sure what their purpose there is. They could maybe not march directly through Gascony. They'd have some forts to deal with, but they could probably go down and siege some of Gascony's forts. Try to make a dif uh, difference there. Regardless, uh, Prussia's occupation not showing up well on Austria's color. Can't even tell from here. Have they occupied anything down here? Doesn't look like it. Can 
Poland continuing to feel the hurt from <clears throat> all of its neighbors, all of whom were in the Protestant League, it seems. And uh, my game going pretty slow now. Of course, the League War, uh, a rather intense thing for the game to deal with, and with so many tags involved, uh, definitely, definitely a tough one. Do have Prussia trying to siege down Nitra now. Nitra, a level 3 fort, so obsolete, and uh, Prussia hoping that, that siege goes quickly. It appears that Switzerland has been pieced out of the League War, as they were fully occupied by Siena, Siena being given Novara for their problems, and perhaps Genoa as well. I think they already had Genoa, though. Sardinia involved. Uh, they're not, or rather, if they were, they're not anymore. Continue to see Mentessa still involved. Kandar still involved. Bulgaria never had a chance to be involved. They have no allies. See one of Russia's stacks over here going after perhaps Russia. Russia actually not on ODF anymore. ODF pieced out of the League War. ODF now guaranteed by Persia because of this little province over here. I mean, that's a good way for Persia to contest Russian uh, expansion, I suppose. Though Persia apparently has angered a lot of its fellow Muslims. Now under attack by the Mamluks, Karaman, Morocco, and Oman. And Persia started it. Persia thinking that they wanted more of the Middle East from the Mamluks, and the Mamluks pulling in Oman, Karaman, and Morocco to contest that. Looks like Persia's army, army is mainly going after Oman right now, but... Uh, Yep, there's Oman's army getting pretty well beaten. Not stack wiped, though. The Mamluks sitting on Khuzestan, trying to siege that down. It is a level 4 coastal fort, though. Not easy. In the slightest. Massive fight occurring in Nitra. Not only did Prussia successfully siege it, but the forces of Nitra, Toulouse, Poland, and Denmark all sent packing by the Protestants there. If the Protestants are winning battles like that, it's no wonder. Oh, wow. The Catholics have actually brought it back quite a bit. Spain losing, being made to give several provinces back to Portugal, and also Valencia back to Catalonia. Spain just performing awfully in that war. They are the number one great power, and they did nothing. They did worse than nothing. They were contributing to the Protestants' loss. I mean, I don't think the Protestants... I don't know. Well, we'll this could still go either way. I mean, we do see people from the uh, Catholic side coming back in to help Poland out. We saw Russia withdraw some of its armies. They are having to deal with some particularists, but uh, I don't see those armies in Russia anymore right now. So, hmm. I think Novgorod might have actually taken Vosterbotten from Norway. Does appear to be the case. Good job for them. Would have been nicer for them if they could have taken more, but uh, they did have these noble rebels to deal with, and when you gotta deal with rebels, you gotta deal with rebels. Novgorod retaining its republic status, but Venice has now gone full monarchy under the Fieschi dynasty, a 324 their first ruler, their heir a 502. A 502 is certainly not the worst 7 point ruler you could run into. Uh, of course, admin points a little better than uh, their counterpoints or counterparts. But having no Diplo's got to help for, or hurt for somebody like Venice. Though, uh, they were already throwing their own diplomatic points away in large part. 
after they had so many vassals and probably not so many Diplo relation slots. And the just barely caught the timer. It was about two seconds from going off. We will have to see the continuation and perhaps conclusion of this uh, League War next time. Thank you for joining me. This has been The Great Partition. Have a good one.